So you're making a game. Chances are that you're using some sort of version control. What if I told you there was a way to take it to the next level? A way that always has the latest version of a game ready. Automated tests, the love of your life, and so much more. Well, this can all be achieved using DevOps. So, we've got your interest. Welcome everyone, I'm Thomas, CEO and Lead Programmer at Byte Me Games. Today, we will be going on some more, into some more detail regarding DevOps. What is it, how to get started, and the ways it can help your game journey. Also, I'm sorry about that love of your life part, I made that up. Although, you, you'll look really cool once you have a DevOps pipeline. First of all, what on earth is this DevOps thing you're talking about? Well, DevOps is a combination of Dev, short for development, and Ops, short for operations. Development may be an obvious one, but what do we mean with operations? Operations are tasks like running tests for your application, building your project, or in web development terms, it could also be used to automatically deploy your website and so on. DevOps aims to automate most of these repetitive tasks, allowing for less time spent on things that don't add much value to your actual game. Yes, you should use tests when creating your game, but nobody will buy your game because you have great unit tests. Testing is an entirely different topic though. Be sure to subscribe for that one as we have a video for that one coming out soon as well. So now we have given you a vague idea of what DevOps is. If you want a more in-depth explanation, be sure to read our blog post as well, where we explain it more concrete. Now, why should you care about DevOps? Well, imagine this scenario. You're working a small team and someone, like Jamie, added a super cool feature. During all of the excitement, it gets built to the master bench on your version control with everyone continuing their work from that commit. Now, imagine William's surprise when he's working on another feature and he realizes that Jamie's changes actually both part of the existing code base and no one had found out until just now. This is where tests come into play. I hear you say, I can write tests without the DevOps pipeline. Why should I use a DevOps pipeline? Well, because first of all, that assumes you actually remember to run your tests all the time. And second, by using a more advanced DevOps platform, you can halt features being pushed to the main branch, as long as tests fail or apply any other type of conditional logic on them. But I don't care about tests, so DevOps is not for me. Well, there are other useful things DevOps can offer. If you've seen the video regarding the top books for game dev, we've already covered the concept of minimum viable products and how they apply to your game. Mainly, always have the latest version of the game ready in case of someone like a friend, potential investor, and just anyone actually, ask to see the super cool game you've been working on. DevOps can help automate the process of building your game. For example, every time a feature gets pushed to the main branch, you can automatically build an executable for all the main platforms your game runs on. In more concrete terms, you can easily automate builds for Android, Windows, Linux, and so on and so forth. And run them immediately and send them out to anyone interested without having to build a specific version manually. Because this can take up quite some time and distract you from your feature you are currently working on. The bigger your game is, the longer your build takes, which can prevent your workstation from being used if you were to build locally. DevOps would run this pro uh, build process on another server, freeing up resources on your own workstation. So how do you actually do this? Well, first of all, there are a few differences depending on what version control system you use. We use a self-hosted version of GitLab. So in this explanation, we will focus on this scenario, but the general ID can be applied to most version control systems. Well, to start, you need a super cool game. Luckily, we, all, we are already working on that. In this case, it's Forge Industry. You also need a version control system. Again, this is a self-hosted GitLab, and optionally, you already have a bunch of tests ready. If not, no worries, you can just do the building step in the pipeline. The first step is to get your Unity project ready. On the Game CI documentation page, you can find a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do this. For us, we just had to copy some files, for example, the YAML file, which contains the pipeline, and the C-sharp script that handles the building called build command. After copying these files, make sure you update the YAML file you just created with the correct variables for your project. After that is done, you can continue to the next step, activation. Well, we make sure our variables in our Git repository are set, where we add our Unity username and Unity password. 
Once this is done, you can make a commit to, uh, with the files you made in the previous step. And if all went well, you should see a pipeline being created. However, this pipeline is not the full pipeline yet. First, we need to press the play button and then get our activation files. Now, just wait for that process to complete. And once it's done, dive into the job and download the job artifact. You should get a zip file containing an ALF file or ALF file. The next step is to activate this. So go to the Unity website for manual activation of licenses. And if you don't know where this is, just check your job logs. This should contain the URL. Paste the ALF file and you should be able to download your license file. The last step is to upload this license file to your GitLab variables. So go to the CI variables and add a Unity license key with the contents of the file as value. Be wary that depending on your Unity license, the steps I just mentioned can be a bit different. And that should be it. If you now rerun your pipeline or just commit anything, your CI/CD pipeline should be set up. By default, this runs your test in specified folder and build it to several platform, uh, platforms. Of course, you can tweak all this using the YAML file we worked with earlier. For example, every time a merge request is made, you can run all tests to know someone didn't break already existing code. If you want more information, be sure to check out the GameCI website and documentation, which you can find in the link down below. Again, we use a self-hosted GitLab, but this may not be an option for everyone. An alternative could be GameCI, which also has GitLab and just Docker container support. So do consider checking them out, even if you are not using the same use case as us. And that about wraps it up. Did you already have a DevOps pipeline? What is your DevOps strategy then? Be sure to let us know in the comments down below. We would love to learn from you guys as well. If you liked the video, be sure to like, subscribe, all that Shazam, because, well, it really helps us out. And we also upload weekly, uh, and we upload content in regards to game dev. Thanks a ton for watching, and see you guys next week.